Man, what a great day. Of course, you all know it's more than just Sunday, don't you? Yeah. Psalms 118, verse 24, this is the day. If I say, this is the day that the Lord has made, wasn't brought to you by General Motors or Ford, amen, or Chrysler or the government, it's the day that the Lord, if I say the Lord, has made. Your assignment today is I will. How many say I will? I will. Now sing it like you mean I will. Rejoice and be glad in it. P.S. Devil, watch out. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a great, great God that we serve today. What a great church. I appreciate your pastor, his precious wife, first lady of the house, Kimmy. Oh, my God. Stand up, Kimmy. Beautiful. <laughs> pastor Damon and all the staff. My wife, Pam, is with me. Pam, would you stand up? All right. Uh, the Lord's been good to me better than I deserve. I have friends. I've got a good wife, wonderful family. Yesterday, I, got, I drove home on my motorcycle from eastern Kentucky. I won't tell you how fast I drove. It ain't none of your business. Uh, but I'm going to tell you what. The angels of the Lord watched over me and camped around about those who were around me. So I wouldn't hit any of them. Uh, but... Uh, God's a great, great God. I'm going to invite you to turn with me in your word today to the book of uh, Romans chapter 8. We're going to share from a familiar scripture and build a message this morning. I feel like God's laid in my heart. Last week, I literally dreamed preaching this message here. Uh, I woke up excited. I said, yes, Lord, you're the, this is the one I'm supposed to share. As a pastor and preacher of over 51 years now, I've done a lot of preaching. And some of the things, I cannot even tell you what I preached. I was so young. I was a teenager when I started traveling across the country. I turned 20 years old uh, in Africa, Kenya, East Africa, doing missions work. The Lord has blessed me abundantly. But I found out that God put something in me as a young man that the world couldn't take away. It transformed my life, transformed the way I think. About, about not only his world, but about my place in this world. My place in this world. You know, there is no one who can take your place. There is no one who can carry out your ministry and your purpose. You have a heartbeat today because you have a purpose from God. I don't care where you've been, what you've done. You may be saying, you don't know my past. You don't know how low I've been. I'm so glad that God reaches down to the guttermost. Amen. Changes their life. Yes. And he says, listen, I've got a purpose and a destiny for you. And I want to talk today a little bit on anointed, anointed to conquer. I realized as a young man, if God told me to do it, I could do it. The problem was not with the money, wasn't with the obstacles, maybe the lack of some educational degree, all it was is that I had to give God my heart, my everything. And God said, you leave the rest of it to me. In Romans chapter 8, it says, verse 35 through 37, very familiar to us today, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who, who shall? Who shall? A lot of people allow anything and everyone. They allow rumor to separate them from the love of Christ. They will allow false reporting to separate them from the love of Christ. They will allow anything in this world to separate. I'm telling you, God's word said, who shall? Yeah. Who shall? Yeah. Who shall? Yeah. Don't care what your neighbor says about you or what your mother-in-law says about you. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. He said, from the love of Christ shall, shall tribulation Anybody ever go through some tribulation? That's where you're tried, all right? Uh, shall distress, I mean, stress is a real factor in this day and time. Shall distress, shall persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? He said, no, it is written for my sake. You are killed all the day long. He said, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And then he went on to say, nay, in all these things, we are more. We are more. We are more. 
more. We're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loved us. I'm not a 10% conqueror. I'm not a 20% conqueror. I'm not a 30% conqueror. I'm not a 40, a 50, a 60, a 70, an 80, or a 90. I am a 100% conqueror through Christ Jesus who loved me. He's not like the old grill cream commercial that said a little dab will do you. All you need is a little bit of victory. He told me, David, I want you to walk in my victory. I've anointed you to be the conqueror of this world. Oh, hallelujah. That'll make a mummy shout, however a mummy shout. So we're more than conquerors. Jesus was a conqueror. We have been to be anointed a conqueror as well. Nowhere in the Bible will you, will you ever read that the church was destined to be defeated, that the church was anything but a conqueror. Amen. Ephesians 5, 27 talked about he would present to himself a, a dim-witted church, a dumbed-down version of himself. He said that he might present to himself a glorious church. I tell you what, a glorious church has got a little bit of swag in them. Amen. My wife's looking at me laughing because she knows I can't walk swag. I cannot do it. <laughs> Amen. Nowhere will you find that God called the church to be anything less than victorious. He said this. He said he might present himself a glorious church without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. I'm going to tell you what I love. Just kind of concentrated on that word glorious. That means we're radiant. That means we have a shine about us. Boy, when you walk into work, I, it, they may have, have 100 watt bulbs in their ceiling, but when you walk in, they'll all turn to about a 150 because you have a radiance about you. Everybody walks in with a frown. Everybody else may walk in with their shoulders all, all humped over and barely clucking through the day. You ought to walk in and say, I talked to my boss this morning. I've got a relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, I've been made above and not beneath. Uh, I've been made the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. Church, in this hour, we're called to be a conquering church that rises us up against COVID, rises up against division in the earth, uh, rises up in the midst of bad news, uh, and that conquering spirit and anointing causes us. Step up, square our shoulders and say, devil, you ain't nothing. Devil, you ain't nothing. You ain't nothing. Tell you what, I believe when I, my feet hit the floor, the devil says, oh my goodness. Because he can't say, oh my God. He says, oh my goodness, he's up again. What kind of mountain is he going to cast into the sea today? What kind of battle is he going to win today? Amen. Oh, I tell you, I feel the anointing of God today. I'm here to tell the blended church, uh, you don't have nothing to worry about because Jesus Christ, the hope of glory, dwells within you and you and you and you and whoever you are. If you know Christ, uh, you don't have a failing Christ. Uh, you don't have an anemic Jesus. You have a strong Savior. Woo! Woo! Oh, my God. Man, I wish I'd have come last night and camped out. I'm having so much fun. David is one of the people I want to talk about today and how he came to this place of the conqueror. Can I tell you again, Jesus is in us. Yes. Why am I connecting Jesus and David? Four times in the New Testament, Jesus is referred to as the son of David. One of the most famous ones was when the blind Bartimaeus cried out, and he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. There was a connection between David and Jesus. Jesus, thou son of David. Well, 
if he's the son of David, I believe that Jesus had some traits that David had. You know, God, every character in the Bible has a purpose. And God writes the DNA of himself within those purposes of people's lives. And so when you look back historically at David, you have to stop and wonder, what is it and what was it about David that they would call out Jesus and say, you're the son of David. I want us to turn quickly to 1 Samuel chapter 17. I want to give you a few thoughts about David. David, by the way, David had a conquering attitude. I'm going to lay some foundation before I get into five things I want to give you. His conquering attitude was not poor is me or, or woe is me. His attitude was, you come get one of my sheep, I'm going to kill you. You touch one of my lambs, I got a rock with your name on it. And if a rock won't do it, I'll take you by the beard. All right? And I'll pull you down to my level, and I'm going to kill you because you ain't taking what God gave to me and put me in charge of. Can I tell us today, all of us, I look at this way, always did as a pastor, that listen, I am the shepherd, the protector of my sheep. I, yeah, there are a lot of things on multiple levels that come against the church. The shepherd has been anointed. Damon, you're anointed. Uh, the pastoral staff of this church is anointed. Pastor, Pastor Moyer is anointed today. I know, you know, he called me last night. He said, will you be upset, Dad, if I don't make it? I said, I'm not going to be upset. You be fun. If you trust me as Dad, I trust you as son. We're going to be all right. And I want to tell you today, we're here today because of God's purpose in our life. David had this get up, and you better shut up. I'm going to knock you down attitude. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, yes. David. You know, David talks smack. <laughs> How many know what talking smack is? <laughs> All right. David talks smack. I, I want to jump into the story of David and tell you this real quick. When, the, when, the God, when God, he first seen Goliath, he said this to him. And I'm reading from chapter 17, 1 Samuel, verse 45. Then, Dave, then said David to, Philist, to the Philistine. One of the problems some people got, they don't talk to their giant. That's right. Amen. Amen. They kind of cow down and, you know, dry their tears. Oh, God, they're going to hurt me. What am I going to do? <laughs> David began to, he, taught, he said something to the Goliath. He said, thou come to me with a sword, with a spear, with a shield. David wasn't blind, by the way, to the obstacles. You got a sword, you got a shield, you got a spear. He knew what he had. But listen, something inside of David was bigger than the giant sword and shield and spear. The rest of the scripture said, well, I'm about to have me a Holy Ghost fit. But I come to you in the name of the Lord, a host. You want to hear some smack, Goliath? I'm going to give you some smack talk. I don't come to you with a shield and a spear and a sword. I come against you in the name of the Lord of the host. I said, this day, this day, this day. Have I say this day? This day, this day, this day, this day, this day, the 22nd day of August 2021. You need a this day attitude, a this day anointing, a this day spirit. And you say, this day, devil, you've crossed the line. This day, devil, you've done too much. I am not going to put up with your junk. Yeah. Come on. Yes, Woo! Now, in case you didn't know what that was, that was just a little bit of Holy Ghost steam. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to come. I'm going to smite you. I'm going to take your head from you. I'm going to give your carcass to the host and the host of the Philistines this day to the fowls of the air and the wild beasts of the earth. And all the earth is going to know that there is a God in Israel. Yes, Woo. Yes, take that, Mr. Devil. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Too many of us have listened and read and reread and re-listened to the attacks of Satan. 
When Satan says you can't make it. When Satan says your kids are going to split hell wide open. When Satan says your marriage is going to end. When Satan says you're going to fail. You're going to lose your job. You have no peace and you have no joy. It's time for you to get some smack talk on. There's time for you to get some attitude that says this day, devil, I've had enough of you. You've talked too much. I've given you an audience too long. And now, and now, it's my turn to talk back to you. My mother, God bless her, heart, died back in 1987, a wonderful woman of God, healed of tuberculosis, raised, gave birth to five more kids after fighting tuberculosis, weighed less than 80 pounds, and God raised her up and healed her, gave her a great ministry. I remember her calling my sister one day, one of my older sisters, and Joyce was on the other end of the line. You know how sometimes when you pick up the phone, you're still talking to somebody, and you're, you're talking, and the person on the other line is listening in what you say. They don't know who's there. And mama called Joyce. Joyce picked up the phone and Joyce was saying, get out. I told you to leave and you never come back into this house again. And I mean business. Get out. And Joyce said, Bob. I said, or my mother said, Joyce, you can't tell Bob to leave. She said, I ain't talking to Bob, mom. I'm talking to the devil. <laughs> if you talk better on a phone, just put it up to your ear. And say, listen, devil. I want to leave you a voicemail. I want to leave you a, I want to, I want to talk some smack to you. I want to tell you today, you're not allowed in my son's room anymore. I want to tell you today, you're not allowed in my daughter's life anymore. I want to tell you today, you're not allowed in my marriage anymore. I want to tell you today, you're a defeated foe. I want to tell you today, I've got victory. I've been anointed. To conquer. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. All right, I'm trying to be careful. Last time I was here, I kind of I kind of used some of your time. How did David come to this place of anointed conqueror in his life? It didn't just happen. It happened before he even knew he was an anointed conqueror. It happened back when he was a child. I want us to go back into another chapter of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, where David was taking care of the sheep of his father, Jesse. In the meantime, Samuel the prophet had been told by God after Saul's failure, first, cha first uh, verse of chapter, I believe, 16 said this. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? How long will you cry over Saul? Let me put it like this. How long will you cry over a, over a past anointing that's dead? How long, will you, how long will you mourn over someone who's disappointed you? Anybody ever have someone disappoint you? Come on now. How many about the rest of you? How about the rest of you? How many ever had somebody that disappoint you? Sure we have, all right? So he said, quit crying about that failed past anointing. Quit crying about that person who has failed you and failed me. See, and I have rejected them from reigning over Israel. Fill your horn with oil. I love that phrase because what he was simply saying is get ready for a new assignment. And then and said, when you, I, you want, I want you to fill your horn with oil was an indication. I've got someone you don't know yet that I'm going to have you to anoint to be the next king, the next conquering king. Fill your horn with oil and then go. Some people have a full horn of oil sitting in this church soaking up week in and week out. Let me just tell you. <laughs> Don't get mad at me now, but I want to tell you, you can't come here week in and week out, soak up all the time, and walk out sopping wet with the anointing of God. I'm going to tell you what. God wants you to find somebody and ring the anointing out on them. Come on. Come on. I might as well be illustrative. Some of us come in and say, oh, Jeremy, I love that song. That's such a good song. You all just done so good. I just, 
I just love, I'm going to soak all that up right here in my little anointing cloth, and I'm just going to let it just get all wet all over me. And, and I just love that song. I got that song on my heart all week long. It's just an awesome song. I can't wait for worship night and, and all that. I'm going to come here, I'm going to shout, and I'm going to scream, and I'm going to holler and all that stuff. And, but you go to work the next day, and you act like you never went to church today. Hello! You walk back in your house and your kids wonder, did you go to church or did you go to hell? Oh, I sat under the anointing. Oh, Brother Daner's a great pastor. He, I've got a, I sat under that anointing and it just oozes out of me. I'm going to tell you what. God's sick of us being soaking wet with the anointing. He wants you to walk out of this church every time you come in and just begin to ring yourself out. Oh, just begin to ring yourself out. Begin to ring yourself out. When you start doing that, when you start doing that, you know what'll happen? You won't have to do a lot of advertisement about this church. It'll advertise itself. Amen. People will know that Jesus is here. I said, people will know Jesus is in the house. Amen. And if he doesn't build it, it's not being built right anyway. Oh, Take your horn of oil, go. He said, I'm going to send you to Jesse, the Bethlehem, for I have provided me a king among his sons. I know I, there, there's a son there. I know you've not heard of Jesse, the Bethlehem knight. He's telling Samuel all this. I'm paraphrasing. You don't know what's, what's, who's living in, under that guy's roof, but I found me a king there. He's been a boy after my own heart. By the way, you don't have to be called a legal adult before God ever anoints you or calls you. Some of the children in this, in this children's ministry, this church, will be the next generation leaders. Some of your sons and daughters and your grandchildren will be the next generation leaders. I want to tell you that prophetically today. We need to understand God wants to anoint our children in the house. He wants to anoint our children in the house. And so saw that Samuel went to the house of Jesse. And of course, let me paraphrase quickly some things that took place. He comes there. They wonder, are you coming in peace or are you coming to call fire down? Because yeah. prophets in the Old Testament sometimes done some of that, brought some judgment, all right? Some people were afraid of the prophet's anointing and, and calling. He send a, Jesse sends a message and he says, are you coming for good or are you coming to do bad? Or are you coming to whoop us or what? Yeah. You know, and so he said, no, I've come for good. I've come to offer sacrifice. And of course, if you read this history, Samuel did not announce and send an, an email to King Samuel, or Saul rather, and say, hey, by the way, I'm going to Jesse's house tomorrow and I'm going to anoint a new king. So it was all underground, all under the, under the radar. He said, no, I'm coming just to offer sacrifice. Still didn't say all that he was going to do. He said, so when he gets there, and I'm, let me paraphrase, he brings all of his oldest boys there except one. I'm going to get to that except one. How would you like for your name to be except one? Oh, should I? Should have gotten that guy. Aren't you glad that the except one became the exceptional one? Hallelujah. I wish you'd write that down. Hallelujah. The except one became the exceptional one. All right? All of David's elder brothers show up. It's a bit, I mean, they got their, they got their Sunday going to meet and clothes on. They got their tough suit on. The first one steps up. He's got a shoulder square back. I serve in the armory of Saul. I'm, a, I'm an Israelite soldier. And uh, by the way, don't I look handsome? Because the Bible said, you read it, it said he was good to look at. He wasn't an ugly dude. He wasn't ugly like me. Like, and like some of you, don't laugh too loud. But he says, he says, God says, I ain't chosen this. <laughs> Didn't even call him by name. I ain't chosen this. The next one steps out and he looks good too. He's in the army too. <laughs> Don't I look holy? Don't I look like a great conqueror? Don't I look good? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. You're looking good. Yeah. Yeah. 
And God said, I ain't chose that either. Didn't even call him a name. Didn't choose this, didn't choose that. All the elder brothers of David hung. None of them had been chosen to be the king. Samuel said to Jesse, do you have another son? And I kind of like to see Samuel go this to Jesse. Don't you have another boy? Come on, there's got to be a king here somewhere. All these other brothers, I believe there were six that had passed by, and God said, I ain't chosen them. And so, oh, uh, so Sam, Samuel gets out the family portrait. Oh, yeah, they're just little bitty guy. <laughs> he ain't worth much. Next time you see him, you may have sheep poop between his toes. He, he doesn't bathe a whole lot. He lives out there with the sheep. Well, that's the one God had seen and told Samuel about, said, I know one that's take, got a heart after me. And so he said, oh, yeah, I got one more. His name is David. He said, I won't sit down till you bring David. And so they ran sit for David. David comes, and David runs in. He's got sweat running down. His hair's a little bit long. His mama runs up to him, and you've got to get in there real quick, and mama's doing this. Straighten yourself up, son. The man of God, so you gotta, you gotta be right. I don't know what I've done, but it's, it'll, it'll work out. All right. He said, and so she said, get yourself in there. Swats him in the bump in the in the back end, and uh, says, get yourself in there. David walks in and he sees this host of people, and there's this man he's not seen before, and his name is Samuel. All right. I don't think Samuel had a picture of himself on everybody's refrigerator in that day. All right. <laughs> He was not. He was not on on uh, La Cie broadcasting, and so he was not. He was not a, a common looking man. But he's standing there, and the old prophet, and this old prophet's got this horn of oil. And David says, "Oh God, don't let him hit me! Don't let him hit me! Don't let him hit me! Don't let him hit me!" But he walks in there, and God says to him, before he said it to anybody else, God said, "This is the one." Can I tell you, God will. T God, God is the one who chooses. God. Is the one who chooses. So he walks in. God said he's the one. So without any further ado, he gets up. Samuel does. Takes the top off the oil. And David stands there like, Hi, how you doing? Yeah, man, it's great to see you too. And suddenly, and the oil gets poured on David. He didn't realize what the anointing was going to do for him. He didn't understand a thing about the anointing. And he probably couldn't spell the word. But he knew something had taken place that day. I said he knew something had taken place that day. I'm going to tell you today, when you know God's touched you, when God's poured himself out on you, nobody will have to tell you that God done something special. You'll know it. You'll know it. When God changes your heart, when God changes your vision, when God changes your passion, you'll know it. Let me tell you some things about David that made him a recipient of that un conquering anointing. First of all, he was a servant. Yes. David was a servant. A servant. By the way, if you can't serve, you can't be sent. If you can't serve, you can't be sent. God's looking for servants in this hour. Jesus said if you're going to be, be a, a, a leader, or you must become servant of all. Yes. One of the things I've always taught people in ministry, if you're going to be a, a pastor or an evangelist or be used of God in the ministry, you must learn to serve. Don't go in to be served. You go in to serve. Yes. Amen. You go in to serve. Amen. And so he was a servant. If you can't serve, you can't be sent. True conquerors know how to serve others. Amen. Amen. Some, some guys come in the house, by the way, and they want, they sit down in their easy chair, and all they want is to be served. If you really want to be a respected father, learn how to serve your family. Amen. 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 Instead of your wife rubbing your feet, you rub hers. Yes, sir. That's right. Well, you women missed a great spot, I'll tell you. I, 
and I set it up so good. Amen. And you women that want to go shopping and get something, if you, when your husband comes in and you just kind of get this attitude of serving your, your sweetheart. Here, baby, can I get you? You sit down here. I'll get you something to drink. Yeah. Honey, I, I love you. I told you lately that I love you. Let me just sing you a verse of it. I'm going to tell you all, it won't take long that your, your husband will say, honey, what would you like to do tonight? And he really means that, by the way. He's not lying. He's telling the truth. What do you want to do tonight? Well, don't say, I want to go yard selling. <laughs> unless that's your thing. You ought to put in the back of your mind, well, I'd like to go to Macy's. Or how about Von Mar? <laughs> Hello. I may never be asked now to come back. Some of you guys are getting it. You got to be a servant. The second thing, he was summoned. He was summoned. He was willing to answer the summons. Now, I'm not going to ask you for a show of hands, but I'm sure there's a few people who's had a summons delivered to them. You know, you know what a summons is? It's a request with authority behind it. Get here. Show up. David was able to take a summons for somebody he had, from somebody he had never seen and say, you show up. Amen? Amen? Amen. You get here. Yeah. David knew it wasn't just a request. And then thirdly, David was selected. He was summoned from the field. By the way, in the, let me go back. He was summoned in the field, in the wilderness. You know what the first four letters of wilderness is? Wild. Have you ever seen somebody wilder than a buck? And you thought, my God, there's no way on earth you could ever use him. <laughs> Look how wild he is. You know, I know your pastor well enough. He's told me stories about his B.C. days. Oh, yeah. And in the wild, God called Daner Moyer. Yes. Yes. In the wild. Yes. He called me a rebellious preacher's kid. In the wild. Oh. I went to a youth camp to meet a girl. I was wild. Hello. On a Tuesday night, Jesus got a hold of my heart, and he won't let it go. And I don't want him to let it go. I want to tell you this morning that in your wilderness, in your children's wildest days, God could be seeking them out. Don't give up. Don't let go. Talk some smack to the devil and say, you're not going to take my kids from me. Oh, hallelujah. He was selected. He was met, which means he was chosen. You've been chosen today. Tell your neighbor you've been chosen. You have been chosen. It implies that others were there to choose from. Amen. And there were elder brothers. There were other shepherds in the field, but there was only one David that had a heart after God that sang unto the Lord a new song that began to talk to God and cry out to him in song. That's why I believe God's in music so much. I believe that music is such an important part of our worship. And so David would worship God. And God said, I've chosen him. I've selected him. Fourthly, David was sent. He was sent because he had been selected. Some people are selected. They don't like this thing of being sent. First Samuel chapter 17, he was sent not to kill the giant the first time. He was sent to carry a lunch. Come on. Yeah, that's right. Just carry, carry the necessary provision to keep your brothers alive. Now, he might have said, but daddy, they pick on me. They're the older brothers. I'm always the punching bag. He said, you're going to take this cheese, you're going to take this bread, and David, you're going to go. And you're going to take it to your brothers. Oh, here, by the way, carry a little extra weight. Here's for their captain. David shows up. He shows up because he had been sent. And then when he gets there, let me quickly wrap this up. He hears a big mouth giant. How many of your giants are big mouth people? Big mouth circumstances. Big mouth issues. 
Hello. Yeah. Uh, your past is too big for your future to ever blossom. You got a rock of your past laying right on top of you and you're not going to be able to get out from underneath that rock. I'm going to suffocate you under the weight of your past. It's going to be guilt, shame, embarrassment. And so Satan just keeps on putting rock after rock after rock on top of you. Every time you think you're over it, somebody comes into your life and reminds you of your past. I'm going to tell you something. Somebody lives inside of you, and it ain't me. His name is Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. And he says, listen, I want you to know that under all of the debris that Satan has piled on top of you, I have, I have anointed a conqueror. There is a, a conqueror's anointing on you. It's time for you to get up. It's time for you to shake some stuff off. It's time for you to let go and let me anoint you and let me use you for the glory of God. It's our promise. You have been anointed to conquer. You've been anointed to conquer. Sorry about that, baby. I don't even do that at home. It's only when I'm anointed. Anointed. He stepped out on the battlefield. David showed up, got stirred up, fed up, and then he stood up and spoke up. I want you to write those things down. David showed up. He got stirred up. Some people show up just I don't know. He showed up. He got stirred up. So stirring up doesn't always start like this. Stirring up starts up sudden down in here. You start analyzing. And you say, that ain't right. That ain't true. That ain't the way it's supposed to be. And you get stirred up. Oh, you know why, you know why some people can't get stirred up? They're full of concrete. That's somewhere in the Greek and Hebrew, I'm sure. They're full of concrete. They're hardened in their heart. They're hardened. They're hardened. I'm going to tell you the Holy Ghost will come into every church service when we assemble together because we're one or two are gathered together in my name there. There will I be. He shows up in every service. Some of us need to let the jackhammer of God's word bust up the concrete in our lives and begin to change us from where we've been to what God wants us to be. And if the jackhammer isn't enough, you need to be pulverized by the weight of God's word. Right? Hallelujah! He said, he said, if you fall on the word, you'll break. But if this word falls on you, you're going to get crushed. Amen? We need sometimes a crushing blow of God's word to begin to smite us and break us up. So David, he, got, he, he showed up. He got stirred up. He got fed up. That means he's getting out of his seating, seating position now. Oh, my, 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 my. Have you ever been confronted by somebody or had somebody kind of get in your face and they're giving it to you like this? Something begins to stir up in you. And then, and then, then there's this, this get up. Something makes you get up. Something makes you stand up. He stood up and then he spoke up. God gives a word to you to speak up to your devil and say, not today, devil. Not today, devil. And tomorrow don't look good either. Amen. And tomorrow doesn't look too good either. In fact, I think, I don't think any day of the year is going to look good because God's in control. There's a new anointing on me and in me. So David was strengthened to conquer. Church, it's time for us to do likewise, to face the enemy as he attacks our families and the world around us. It's going to take an anointed church to conquer the adversary of our soul. It's going to take an anointed church to counteract the attack of the enemy against the body of Christ. I believe in this hour, 
Can I tell you that Abraham interceded for Lot for one, for one. Oh, yeah, he got down to where, if, will you save a lot or save Sodom and Gomorrah for 10 righteous souls? And the angel of the Lord said, yes, I'll do it. But because there wasn't 10, God, I believe, put it in Abraham's heart to intercede for just the one. There's still a one. Everybody in this place knows a one that still needs to be set free, still needs to be delivered, still needs to be made whole. I want to tell you today, there's enough anointing of God. There is not a shortage of God. OPEC does not control that kind of oil. Amen. The wall, the street, or the stock market doesn't control that kind of increase. You and I have been anointed to conquer. Jesus said, John 20, verse 19 and 20, let me just give you the little, little snippet. He said to them, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. How was he sent? Luke 4. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me. You do not have a Christ that dwells in you that is not anointed. That Jesus that walked into your life came there fully anointed. Now that fully anointed Christ wants to live through you. He wants you to lay hands on the sick and they recover. He wants you to lead people to him. He wants you to do it. I've asked God the longest day that I live, Lord, keep ringing me out. If I, if I make it to heaven with one drop in me, I must not have got wrung out enough. Oh, there it is. All right? Ring me out, God. Ring me out. I pray that that's the heart cry of every person in this house today because you are anointed to serve. Don't let that anointing sit there and just sour. Let that anointing flow out through you. For you, my friend, are anointed to conquer anointed to conquer. Would you stand to your feet all over this place? Yes, Lord. Mm. What an anointing in this house. Let me ask, how many would like for God to give you a fresh and new anointing today? I mean a known anointing. To where you're not picking behind the, walking behind the building, hiding from the devil but to where you walk out with boldness and say, this is my block. This is my block. This is my house. This is where my kid sleeps. Amen, my son sleeps in that bedroom. I dare you to walk in this bedroom. Amen. I believe in anointing doorposts of homes. I believe in anointing windows where they crawl out and try to sneak out at night. Hello. I believe in it. If you'd like that fresh anointing, I want you to make your way to the front. We're going to pray over you. All right, just come right now. All right? Just step out of your seat and come. Just come. Altar workers are coming. They're ready. There's an anointing in this place and an anointing to deliver. The anointing does not make you, does not come to make you feel just comfortable. The anointing comes to equip you for the purpose and ministry of God. Now, if you want prayer, I want you to come as well. You must come. We're going to believe God. We're going to believe God. I want you to gather around those that have come. We're going to be praying. We're going to believe God for that fresh anointing, for that fresh touch of God. All right, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray, Lord, over this, over this people, these that have come today at this altar, I believe you, God, for a fresh and a new anointing. God, a fresh and a new anointing. God, a fresh and a new anointing, a fresh and a new anointing. You see every giant that has come. You're aware of how big the spear is. You see how large the Lord the shield is. You know how tall the giant is. But today, God, I pray for a release of new anointing. God in this house, a new anointing around this altar that God, you would speak the heart. You would equip. You would cause them to rise up and experience, Lord, the power 
of God in their life. Let it be manifest in them in this hour. God, we declare peace over their mind. We declare peace in their heart. Lord, you said my peace. I leave with you. Now, Lord, let them take hold of it. They're not going to go home troubled. They're not going to walk into their house troubled. But, Lord, they're going to walk in with a no-so that they have been anointed to conquer and that, God, you, you, Father, have brought that new anointing in their life. Touch them now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Give God a hand clap of praise. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. How many knows he's a liar? The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. When he says you can't, you say, oh, wait just a minute. I've done read the manifesto. I've done read the will and testament of my king. And my king said I'm more than a conqueror because he loves me. He loves me. Oh, I'll tell you, I'd like to just punch the devil right in the mouth right now. You need to go home and get you a switch and just charge hell with a thimble full of water. Amen. Pastor, would you Hallelujah, come? hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Pastor David Gibson, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but my heart is full and blessed today. There, there, there was a word for this church that was given today. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. This is the moment right here. There was a word that was given in this house today. A fresh anointing is available. I thank David from the bottom of my heart for allowing himself to be the instrument used to bring that word to each and every one of us. We all needed it. If you are in this house today and you have not made that decision for Jesus Christ, do not leave the same way you came in here. I'm telling you, your life can be touched and changed right here in this moment. Your heavenly father is reaching out to you and there's people that will stand by your side. If we can help you in any other way, if there's anything else that we can pray for you with, don't leave church. This world needs us too desperately without making it right, right here, right now. Your father is ready for you. Amen. God bless you all. Tell the children's church workers, thank you as you receive your children, go out and conquer as God called you to do. God bless you all. We love you. We'll see you next week.